and welcome to The Bend Show, where the work ends and the fun begins. Catch Beck if you can. Yes, that is me, your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. Beck, 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 Beck. As always, we love hearing from all of you. Comments, stories, ideas. Get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305-900-BEND. That is 305-900-2363. Or drop an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. My producer, sound engineer, and co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart is with us. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) You weren't expecting that one. All right. He's kind of maybe still waking up because we've already been working cattle for a couple of days. And we'll get into that a little bit more in the show. But before we get too far, I want to remind everybody that as we're camping and enjoying everything outside there is to do, tick season is here. Yes, I'm talking about the In creepy droves. crawlies. Have you noticed that they seem to be like littler this year? You're right. Where we For are at, reason. they have been a little bit smaller. And Maybe that's the just other day, thicker, Tigger know. and I were out fishing, and I can't remember within an hour how many of them did you pull off your pants? There's quite a few i mean there was like three or four in just a short period of time was it more than that i think it was more than that i think it was more than that but you you always feel like they're crawling on you after that the wind (laughs) hits you you know on on your arms and then it gives you the willies that you think you're covered in tick well okay no this makes me remind reminds me of a story i got a quick tell everybody was it a year or two ago we were i don't know what we were doing but we took out the car to go do something and it, lo and behold, it'd oh, been all right. <laughs> winter, okay? We hadn't yet gone any hiking. I think, I think snow might have even still been on the ground. And what was it? There was a tick that was crawling across the dash yeah. of the car. Yeah. So then we had to Google yeah. it and look it up and found out that, get this, a tick can live without a host for, it's like multiple years, something like that. I can't remember the exact statistic, but they can live quite some time without a host. So and when you take your clothes off, as you're itching now, everyone is itching and like, oh gosh, when's the last time I, you know, shook out my coat or washed my coat? And they can coat? survive with great ease in our vehicles with no problem at all. They can just hang out. This and have guy a little party was a happy little guy. He was crawling right across the radio dial. I, yeah, I speak of that, the devil. I think that. Hey, I think it would. That uh, yeah, I think there's still snow on the ground when he. But you had one other tip you were sharing with me the other day. What was I that I thought again? it was super cool. I seen where people take vet wrap and they go around the bottom of their, of their pant legs and they seal the pant legs shut and go around their socks, even on the tops of their shoes, where if you know you're going to be in tall grass... And then that way, when the ticks crawl up your legs, they get stuck on the vet wrap. Oh, that's super cool. So that's the sticky genius. stuff that self-adheres. But you're saying kind of wrap it around your pant leg backwards seal, seal so that the shut. sticky stuff's on the outside, well, right? E- either way. Either oh. way. It isn't really. It just sticks to itself is maybe what uh. you're thinking. So it, it's it's called vet wrap. People use it for horses or just about anything. You can go into any farm supply store and get it. And it costs a few dollars for a roll. But just wrap it around. Seal your pant legs shut. Go around your ankles all the way down. Everything, no ticks. Genius, I think. I haven't there tried it There you go. Yet, but Tigger's amazing. tip for the day. Genius. Well, just like many of you, our candle has been burning at both ends as Tigger and I have been putting the miles on, spending the fuel, spending the dollars on the fuel, keeping the diesel That's truck I'm running. I'm sorry and... if people heard me <laughs> yawn. I, you know, during the little music jingle there, Beck said, quit yawning in the microphone. I didn't mean to. I, I didn't think the microphone was picking that up. So if it does, I'm sorry. I will forgive you because we've only already crammed in um, two or three brandings this week, and we have one more that we're heading to after the show wraps. So it's not like we haven't been putting the miles on, working really hard on our place, and helping our good friends with th- what they've got going on. I don't know how other people celebrate their Memorial Weekend, but for us, it's a lot of getting together and spending time with friends, family, and getting some cattle worked. Creating wonderful memories. Absolutely. And and you're taking pictures, which by the can you put some of those on if they're not particular friends with you on Facebook, throw them on the bend page. Oh, that's and a great share idea. some of your photographs. I okay, know people I will would, do that. I will do that. that. And I will say, by the way, those people that are sending Rebecca and I friend requests, um, if we don't know you, we want to know you, but just say, hey, we listen to the band and we want, you know, yes, just let please. us know because we're getting tons of those and we don't quite know 
are you a listener? Are you right. following us along? Yes, yes, yes. Let us know. So in regards to those that may not be familiar with what branding time is and such. Do you have trivia? Do you have facts? <laughs> you have, I would imagine I lit up because you always got cool stuff. Well, I don't necessarily have trivia, but I was digging into this a little bit because you and I have been born, raised into this whole lifestyle. So we just assume a lot of times people do know what this is. But for those that don't, outside of, you know, your favorite brands of products, we're talking about working cattle. And back in the day, ranchers of the West were more familiar with this type of brand. And that's where they'd use the hot irons on the hides of animals to so you knew your ownership what it was identification yes but i wanted to dig into this a little further and find out how long has this been going on is this something that just came about during the billy the kid days or was this going on much longer than that and tigger do you have any idea how long the concept of livestock branding has been going on well you said okay i'm going to compare it to you said billy the kid days it's been it was going on Long before Billy the Days, the kid, Billy the Kid Days. You're absolutely right. It has. It's but been going it on much longer than that. We're talking, it's been dated back to ancient Egyptian time or longer. Okay, now I'm fascinated that, right. that, that brand, uh, the form of identification uh-huh. of livestock goes back to the Egyptians. Now they, now I see why why you are taking us on this little, yeah, this history, little, this little lesson. history lesson. Everybody's learning something. According to the Smithsonian, they believe that this has been going on for more than 4,700 years. I would have never guessed that. And that an ancient Egyptian tomb was actually found with paintings depicting a cattle roundup and branding occurring roughly in 2700 BC and is considered one of the earliest record of livestock branding 2700 I, BC I got to be I never would have I never would have guessed that I was right when I said it was before the days of Billy the kid but I didn't Isn't think that it amazing? was before and, the days of Billy And on of top of the Egyptians in recent years which this isn't even that recent there's been allusions to the practice in our Roman literature as well as in the Bible naming with Jacob the herdsman So there you have it. And if you're wondering how did this show up in America, this was thought to have been brought over by the European travelers. I thought it would have, I thought it came from our friends from Mexico. I know. We're learning something every day. (laughs) I mean, there you go. How many people were listening to this and saying, come on, Beck, you know, everybody knows about branding. And all of a sudden you go down this road. It's been going on for a very, 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 very long, long time. Jeez. And of course, there's many variations of brands along the way. And Tigger, you're you're a little bit more fluent with it than I am. And I'm talking about when people get creative and they call themselves the crazy R or the lazy oh, what, W you're about what or the, the symbols flying. mean, how to read yes. them. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I knew when my dad was a cattle buyer, I learned a lot about how to read brands. But I'm, I mean, I'm a little rusty at it. I know R's. <laughs> And I know the neighbors, so I can tell the difference between the two. So there you have it. That's what we got going on in a little bit as soon as we shut the studio lights off. Until then, let's talk about the news. Sit back and enjoy the news. This spring, there is one predator that has been going viral in the video world. I am talking about eagles. These predators have been caught on camera and are impressive. Some of the headlines to Google to watch these crazy videos include Bald eagle flies away with house cat in northern Minnesota. And then even larger than bald eagles, golden eagles, the largest bird of prey in North America, and one of the biggest in the planet are really showing off just how strong they are with recent headlines such as this one crossed my desk today. Golden eagle shows off its raw strength, savagely flying off with a fox. Yes, a gold eagle flew off with a fox. There are many stories out there right now about what eagles are capable of. Golden eagles are such strong predators that videos of the birds hunting wild boars and dragging goats off of cliffs. Yes, you heard me right. Dragging goats off of cliffs have all generated buzz online. Earlier this spring, the state of Wyoming even recently approved plans to relocate a group of these birds that have been eating sheep on ranches. I did a little research and learned golden eagles build some of the biggest nests in the bird world. Oftentimes, their nests are five to six feet wide and two feet tall. The largest golden eagle nest on record was an astonishing 20 feet tall and eight and a half feet wide. So here you go, everyone. 
there are some videos for you to check out on YouTube. And a friendly warning, watch your pets, people. These airborne predators do not discriminate between animal species, domesticated or wild. All they care about is what their next meal is going to be. Sadly, our beloved pets, whether they be small dogs or cats, are generally easy targets for them. So be aware and keep your eyes on the sky. That's a wrap of the news. Stay where you are. More of The Bend right after this. Little Rack Taxidermy. Be it a youth's first hunt or a trophy of a lifetime, let it be something you always remember. Reach out to Little Rack Taxidermy on Facebook and have Heather bring back that natural look. That's Little Rack Taxidermy. Public service announcement. Think safety first. Due to the extreme drought encompassing much of the United States, wildfire season is here. Before lighting that campfire or grill, check daily the local regulations for potential fire bans or fire restrictions. Do you want to promote your product or your event? You want to get in front of the right audience? You want to make your business grow, take it to the next level. You know you need more, and that's where Beck and I come in. We can help. Drop us a message and find out more today. Passionate about hunting, conservation, learning, and encouraging others? Watch Buckstorm on YouTube. Weekly videos about what it's really like hunting the Black Hills. Regardless the trophy or left empty-handed, Buckstorm on YouTube shares the real stories. Subscribe today, Buckstorm. Waterfowl, turkey, deer, ToxicCalls.com offers all of the various styles of calls needed to take your hunt to the next level when you create quite simply the most real sound yet. American made to boot. Order today, ToxicCalls.com. Our shows, well, they're your shows. Is there something that you'd like to hear? A segment, perhaps, that you would like to have a little more often? Like something, don't like something, it doesn't matter. Let us know. Call the hotline, email us, or message us on social media. We love hearing from y'all. Welcome back, folks. We're heading outside here for this next segment. Yes, enjoy the beautiful weather. There is an event going on right now here to promote everything agriculture. So don't mind a little bit of the background noise if you catch it. Anyway, joining today on behalf of the North Dakota Beef Commission and the North Dakota Cattle Women is lifelong rancher, retired educator. So thankful for our teachers, by the way. We have Mary Freilich joining us. Welcome, Mary. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Okay, well, May is beef month, and everybody knows Mia's back here. I love beef. I love everything about the cattle industry. Summer is upon us, which means grilling season. Who doesn't love this? So Mary is here with us, and she is going to share with us a little bit more about beef, and so it's not so scary. We'll put it that way, because sometimes everyone knows how Tigger is the Dutch oven cook in our household, but I'm going to be frank. He is not the greatest when it comes to beef. Isn't that sad? We even have a ranching. We talk about ranching all the time, but yet who cooks the beef? I do. So do you have any tips on, or what do you think maybe some misconceptions there are with beef that sometimes makes it a little scary to cook with? You know, it's, it's interesting because I've even heard young women say, I've never made a pot roast. Well, for heaven's sakes, a pot roast, you can take a, any cut of meat that is not not already tender and throw it in with some kind of a juice and some seasonings and throw your potatoes in and you've got pot roast very easily and I used to teach a class and they would be amazed they'd say I never did that I thought it was hard it's not hard you know you just have to make sure you use the right kind of method with the right cut of meat and that's the main, that's often a problem. Someone will say, oh, that was the worst roast I've ever had. Well, you know what, if you just take a good roast and you put it in the crock pot or something for eight or nine or ten hours, you're going to have mush probably at the end of it. You have to make sure that you're using the right cut of meat when you're using those methods. And and those nice, lean, um, tender cuts of meat, anything that says loin, perfect for the grill and as you say this is grilling season upon us right now and that's kind of why beef month is in may because we kick off the grilling season 
I would say I couldn't agree more with you on that. And it is exciting to me to just get outside and I have fun just exper experimenting with cooking in general and not to be afraid of and educate yourself on those cuts of meat. Do you think, are there any tricks to say, say you've got a roast or something in the freezer and you want to take it out, what would you say is the best, best or maybe one of the easier ways to thaw that meat so that it is going to, to turn out a little better than maybe if you you know, threw it in the microwave. Or is the microwave still the best way to thaw it? Well, you know, anytime you thaw meat in the microwave, you better make sure that you cook it right away because you've got a chance that some of it is going to, could start cooking like your edges. It seems like always get a little bit of cooking done on them and they become somewhat cooked. And at that temperature, that's when you can start seeing bacteria grow. And so we want to make sure that we always cook those meats and to the right temperature to 160 degrees and keep it at a steady temperature and so we want to make sure that we thaw our meat correctly and as you say the refrigerator I know it's the slowest method but it usually is your best choice. Oh you have me excited I've been doing it the right way that means so for me I know it's a trick I've done just to kind of help Tigger and I out for the whole week is I will take out say a roast or maybe a package of steaks or even a pound of hamburger one or two of my different proteins I'll take them out and put them in the fridge and just let them slowly thaw on their own for the week and then they're ready to go it might take an extra day or so but I've, I know myself, I'm glad you threw that out there because I didn't, I just did it on my own. I feel so brilliant right now. I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> the safest way to take care of your meat. And, and it does, it does take care of the integrity of the meat as well. As I say, you know, you can have some cooking and some edges that will start to cook when you microwave. And so it is a, the best way will always be to thaw it slow in your refrigerator and not out on the counter. Oh, that's a great one there. Hadn't even thought about that one. Okay, well, with Summer Upon Us, do you have happen to have an easy, quick recipe to kind of share that, that might be an easy one for all of us? Or, or maybe uh, we hear a lot about skirt and flank steaks. Sometimes they're a little bit, a little more um, priced in a more reasonable manner versus some of the other beautiful cuts. I mean, don't get me wrong. We all love our T-bones and our porterhouses, but sometimes as a family, it's a little bit easier to use some of these other cuts. Do you have any tricks for cooking some of those in the summertime? Well, you know, one of the new, and it's not really that new anymore, and most tender cuts of meat is your flat iron steak. Oh, you hear about those in all the restaurants lately. Yes, and those are perfect on the grill. And it, you just have to cook them sl rather slow so that all that good connective fat in them will melt and you'll have such a tender meat. It is the second most tender cut of the animal and it's priced much more reasonably than getting into your T-bones and, and your porter horse and, and it will be just as tender if you cook it correctly. The North Dakota Beef Commission has great brochures and great help. You can always check out their website for recipes and always go to um, beefitswhatsfordinner.com. They have great recipes for you always. Well, there you have it. I couldn't agree more. Beef is what's for dinner should be all of our slogans, I would say. Can't go wrong there. Well, this has been great having you on the show. Do you have any other last thoughts to share with us as we get going and getting our grills out and our smokers going? Just remember, as you say, beef is a full, a, a really important protein for us. It gives us zip, zinc, iron, and protein. And it gives us the best iron we can absorb through our body because it's a hema iron. And that's the best absorbed. And, you know, women always need a little extra iron. So don't skip out on that beef. There you go, folks. Don't be afraid. Give it a try. Beef, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> Again, thank you, Mary, for being here with us and offering those terrific tips. As she mentioned, for wonderful beef recipes, head to North Dakota Beef Commission's website, ndbeef.org. That's N-D as in dog, beef.org. Or be sure to check out beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Now, if you have a favorite recipe of your own for this grilling season, we'd love to hear about it. Email bendradioshow at gmail.com. 
Your recipe just might be the next in our crosshairs. Let Tigger and I be the judge. Stay where you are. We make our final bend right after this. Here is how we are changing things up on the bend. The fruits of our labors to the frying pan. We put those recipes to the test. Now, over the next few months, we're going to be testing out your submissions. Will we survive? Tune in next week. Buckstorm Hunts offering Black Hills guided rifle and archery hunts on over 1 million acres for deer and turkey and for South Dakota residents, elk and bighorn sheep too. Hunts are limited. Book a hunt today. Head to buckstormhunts.com. Add a little heat to those burgers and brats. Add some Mickey's mustard or some Mickey's hot mustard to your summer cooking. Ain't nothing like it. Mickey's mustard. That's M-I-C-K-E-Y-S-M-U-S-T-A-R-D dot com. Mickey's mustard. Public service announcement. Drought is affecting many states this year. Due to the low water levels, many of our favorite lakes and rivers may have limited boating access. Plan ahead. Check with local authorities for boat ramp closures or changes. Be prepared and plan ahead. It's super easy to get a hold of Beck, and we want to hear any story that you may have or just what's happening around your band. 305-900-2363. That's the hotline. Leave a message. Send a text. 305-900-2363. OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org, a nonprofit providing veterans and active service members with opportunities to hunt and fish at no cost to them. For more information or to donate, check out OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org. Again, that's OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org. Welcome back. Heading to the field, we have Sean Ayer in the Pacific Northwest with this update. Let's take a listen. I'd like to start by thanking the band at Radio Show and Beck for the opportunity to call in and give updates here from Washington. We have wound down our turkey season. We were uh, lucky enough to get out and fill a couple of tags this year, although it was probably one of the stranger weather years we've had for a turkey season that I can remember. It was still fun, and we learned a lot. So with turkey season being done, uh, we can focus on getting some stuff done around the farm, Got a load of two or cows to move out to a piece of dirt that they're going to summer on. And uh, while they're gone, we'll do some do some chores around the house. And uh, we got some stuff to get ready for uh, our next duck season. You know, starting this fall, that's uh, really all I can think about is chasing ducks and geese. Although there'll be some walleye and salmon fishing in between now and then. But uh, we've got some some boats to get ready, some decoys to clean, and, and all that good stuff to make sure we're we're ready to go for this upcoming duck season. But we'll see. It's it's getting warm. Suns are shining. We've had some good spring rains, and we've got some, some good grass, dry land grass coming up. So we're looking forward to what the summer brings and the times with the family and getting some chores done. We'll go from there. Like I said at the beginning, we sure appreciate the Bend Radio Show and what you've allowed us to do with these updates. Uh, Keep it going. We'll keep on listening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sean. And folks, be sure to check out ToxicCalls.com. Next, we head south to Missouri. Justin Hampton from Ozark Traditions TV has this update. Got a little fishing report for you. Uh, The crappie's pretty good right now on the main lake. If you fish the point and and close to the bank, they're biting really good and uh, you really want to get close to dark, you can catch a few catfish. They're biting real good about dark. And the uh, white bass are starting to nest pretty good here in the Ozarks. They might be running before too long. And the black bass are all on beds. So if you're a big fisherman here in the Ozarks, now's the time to be out there fishing. Thanks and have a good day. Thanks, Justin. We wish you and everyone out there casting lines to have tight lines. And be sure to tag at, that's A with the circle, The Bend Show on your fishing trips and summer fun that you post to social media this year. I'll know more next week, but rumor has it that there is going to be one heck of a contest coming up. Stay tuned for details in next week's show. And until then, be sure to be taking lots of pictures. Social media, we are everywhere Facebook and Instagram. Follow us all week long at The Bend Show. Thank you to my producer, sound engineer, co host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. 
to Mary Freilich for sharing beef tips. Remember, if you have a favorite grilling and barbecue recipe this summer, send it in for Tigger and I to try. Let us be the judge. Thanks to our Bend Field staffers, Sean Ayer and Justin Hampton. As mentioned, we wish everyone casting lines to have tight lines, real in the biggins. As you all keep making those memories, be sure to keep sending in those pictures by email and always tagging at the Ben Show on social media. Hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, to ranching, farming, to your rural way of life. We want to see it all. We want to see and hear those memorable moments. And as I mentioned in the show, I hear we have one heck of a summer fun contest coming your way. So be sure to stay tuned into next week's show. If you missed this episode or any in the past, Find all our shows on the website, thebendshow.com, and be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. Booking events now. Change things up and have us, Beck and Tigger, help you with your event. From MCs to entertainment to acting as host couple, let us make your gathering extra special. Thank you to our partners, Atlas Tracks, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Wablo Creek Outfitters, Buckstorm on YouTube, Ranch House Coffee, RFD TV, and the Cowboy Channel. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners that came along. And whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. Remember to keep up with me, Beck, all week long by following The Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Bend. The Bend.